What's up YouTube? So today I'm going to go over my AMCAS application that got me into med school this last cycle. So without further ado, let's hop into it. Um, on this first page, the only real things of note are going to be my submission date right here and then my process date. So I submitted this um, around noon, the day that it opened. So that was fairly early. And then you can see it was processed just a couple days later, which is good. Um, submitting your AMCAS application early is absolutely paramount in order to uh, make sure that you are like one of the first files on the school's desks and to make sure you aren't delayed. Because if you submit even a week later, your process date will likely not be three days ahead. It could be up to like a week or two weeks or something like that. Um, so then we go through and this is all just like contact information. Then they ask for biographic information. Um, and then we keep going through and then you get um, like family income level where you grew up. Um, is it an urban suburban area that sort of thing. Um, they want to know how you paid for your education. So it's just to get like a scope on how you grew up and what your upbringing was. Um, parents and guardians, again, SES disadvantage or not, if you're first generation in college or not, um, that sort of thing. It asks for siblings, um, and then felony, misdemeanor, all of that, institutional action, that sort of thing. So these are like the red flag section. So all of that was good for me. Um, and then we pop into the courses. So I took all of my courses at the same school, the University of Utah. Um, and I did that within like four years plus a summer after that. Um, the only real things that stand out are my two withdrawals. So ironically, I withdrew from introduction to pre-med. Um, that was a seminar class that started like the second half of the semester. And I did not realize that it had started and I missed the first day. And it was only three lectures you had to go to. But if you miss one, you can't get an A. So I withdrew from that. Um, I did get a B plus in Gen Chem too. Um, note to self, do not ski more than you go to class. Um, and then one of the mistakes I made, and I'm not sure if it really made a difference in my application or not. Um, so I accidentally put down my organic chemistry two lab where my organic chemistry one lab should go right here. I got an A in both of them, so it didn't affect the GPA. Um, but as you can see down here, I also had OCHEM 2 and then OCHEM 2 lab a second time. So I did not email any schools when I asked my advisor about that. They said that um, like when they get my transcript, they'll see that it was an A either way. So it didn't really make a big difference. Um, one of the other things I did was I pass failed my EMT training. This was during COVID. Um, and it was nine credit hours. And I was borderline between an A and an A minus based on how I did on the uh, class final and the um, like final to actually get my EMT certificate. So for that reason, I credit non-credited that one because if had I gotten an A minus in nine credit hours, that would not have been good for the, the GPA. Um, another non-A was physics one right here. I took this over the summer and I definitely struggled a little more in physics one than physics two, which was really weird, but um, physics two definitely worked with me better. Um, and then we go down, I got another A minus. This was my upper division writing class actually for health and human relations. Um, and then we keep going down, keep going down. This was a withdrawal that I really hated to take down here on advanced human anatomy. Um, this was ironically like my favorite class that I had signed up for, but I decided to retake my MCAT during this semester, and I was taking um, behavioral neuro, cell structure and function, advanced human anatomy, and biomechanics all in the same semester while working and then trying to retake the MCAT. Um, and what I realized was there was no way I was going to our cadaver lab enough to be able to get an A in advanced human anatomy. More likely, it would have been a B. Um, just because I simply could not go with the MCAT class, which I'll talk about later, but I decided to take like a full blown in person class. So for that reason, I did withdraw from advanced human anatomy and the secondaries, you do get an opportunity to write why you withdrew from certain classes. However, 
it's not that many characters and it was really hard to put into perspective what I withdrew for. And then it's hard because you're supposed to, um, like, obviously it was my decision to sign up for all these classes, but that poor time management is something that schools also see when I overloaded myself, um, that semester, but here nor there. And then the only other thing on my transcript that is different than what will actually happen is this comparative physiology class. This was supposed to be during the fall of uh, 2022. However, um, my school actually recataloged our neurobiology emphasis and that was no longer required. So I did not end up taking that class, but everything else I took. Um, and then we get down to the MCAT score and my overall GPA. So my cumulative undergrad was a 396 for the science. The all other was a 397, making my total a 396. With the nine pass fail credits, and then I had three AP credits uh, for AP history that were used. Um, if we come down to the MCAT, so I took the MCAT twice. Um, the first time I got a 509, and the second time I got a 514. Um, the 509, I had a feeling that was going to come out around a 509. It was lower than my testing scores that I had. Um, and then not to make excuses or whatnot, but I did get a flat tire on the way to my testing center. And I was so stressed for the first two sections. It was absolutely awful. Like I did not finish the cars section on that one. Um, I was absolutely tweaking and that was just it was a good practice so that I knew what the testing environment was like. I would say it's very different going from your practice test to the real test because when you're in the real one and you're 50 50 between an answer instead of like, all right, let's pick one, we'll move on. It's more like I'm not going to med school each question. And that was a lot to handle the first time. Um, so I knew as soon as I took that, that I was going to be retaking. Um, and then, so I decided to retake originally I was going to retake in December. Um, However, I just did not bring myself to study that semester right after I took it. I needed just a little bit of a break before I went back into it. So then I decided to take an MCAT course in the spring. Um, and then that's what got me the 514, which also dropped from my practice score. I really can't even tell you how my cars was a 127 both times because my testing average on cars on every practice exam, the first time and the second time, was a 130. The first time I did not study for cars once, didn't finish it and got a 127. The second time I used the entire like cars prep course, which was a ridiculous amount of hours, finished the whole thing, was fully expecting a 132 and it came out to a 127. So I really have no idea, but every other score was uh, within my practice test range. The cars just dropped like three points each time. Um, but overall the 514, I'm I am glad I retook it, and I do think that played a role in me getting in this year. Um, as we move down, I did not take AAMC preview, so you'll notice I applied to UCLA. That um, negated that application there. Um, I did take the Casper test, though, and I got – it's either the second or the third quartile. It's not the very bottom, but the one up from that is what I ended up getting. Um, and then we move into the work and activity section. Um, so I had a couple different activities. I think I filled up 12, um, but I'll leave all the descriptions open for you guys to see. Um, this was my gap year job, which is a critical care technician in the emergency department. Um, I did that and I proceeded to work in a lab at the same time during my gap year. Um, so I only had 60 hours completed, which I think definitely hurt my patient care portion of my application. Um, and then I worked full time the whole gap year. So that is projected through August, which I will continue to do. Um, my description for this is really not the best. I mean, I basically had enough hours to finish my full orientation and one week, um, which was basically all training. Um, ironically, right after I finished this is when I like started seeing some interesting things that had a few patient stories that could have been put in the application, but I still think it was more important to get the application submitted early than it was to include a better description since my hours still would have been low on the completed side. Um, the next experience, um, I worked in a research lab. 
um, at the Huntsman Cancer Institute, which is connected to like the University of Utah per se. Um, so I had completed 475 hours and then I had projected a thousand. So I worked this part-time while doing the critical care job. And I did that, um, also during that spring semester, I was doing this while I was taking the MCAT class and then withdrew from that advanced anatomy course. Um, and then for shadowing, this was all of my shadowing. Um, I did not really do any primary care, which I think, uh, probably was not the best decision. But that said, it was during COVID, so it was kind of difficult to find shadowing to begin with that would let me in. Um, but I shadowed an orthopedist, sports medicine guy, an orthopedic surgeon, a plastic surgeon, um, an orthopedic trauma surgeon, a general surgery surgeon, and then a, another trauma surgeon slash acute care surgeon. Um, all of that I did at the University of Utah or the Huntsman Cancer Institute. Um, so the next thing I have, and you can see this was one of my most meaningful, um, but I was the Interfraternal Council President at the University of Utah. Um, and then one of the things that I was able to do in that position was to start a diversity, equity, and inclusion chair, um, which was something our campus didn't have that it definitely should have. And um, that's pretty much what I wrote about for that. Um, the next most meaningful was an emergency department volunteer. Um, this I did during COVID at um, one of the local hospitals near me. Um, you can read that if you would like. And then my last most meaningful, which is, um, I'm not exactly sure how med schools took this as patient care hours, um, which is what I like listed it under was medical and clinical, um, which I stand by that decision. But I essentially, I care took for a guy with spinal muscular atrophy for a large part of my undergraduate career. Um, and yeah, this was um, probably the most meaningful out of my most meaningful um, remarks. And then I just did some other basic stuff. I was an organic chemistry TA, and then I was also a private tutor during undergrad. Um, I was the scholarship chair in my fraternity. I was also a teaching assistant for the cadaver lab for basic anatomy. Um, and then I think one of the other things that did hurt my application, I only had 50 hours of non-clinical volunteering, which is not great. I would definitely recommend getting more, especially now that I know a lot of the target schools that I applied to really focused on non-clinical volunteering. So I thought um, that it would have been enough just to do volunteering, but I didn't realize that the non-medical clinical volunteering is completely separate from your clinical volunteering. So I think getting a greater amount of hours in this would have helped me. Um, but what I did with this program, it was just on Fridays until COVID ended it, but we would do two hours on Fridays. Um, and then each, uh, volunteer was paired with a special needs child. Um, so that was my only volunteering and then the other red flag on that that was pretty bad was I only did that my sophomore year um, and then a little bit my junior year um, but COVID happened and that was uh yeah really bad for that amount of date range to have that hours I honestly don't even know if I would put this on my application if I had to reapply or I would have just done the first like 35 hours because the other ones it was like all messed up with COVID um, and then I put down a one hobby, which was uh, mechanic work. Um, I basically built an off-road car, and then I also work on old motorcycles and some stuff like that. So I figured that was something I wanted to add to show a little more depth of, like, who I am. And then, uh, let's see. So you guys are more than welcome to pause and read my personal statement. I'll give a general overview of what it's like. So um, I took the Ryan like Ryan Gray's approach um, of like planting the seed and that sort of thing. So I started with um, a story about how I got hurt during baseball um, and how I sat in a physician's room and how that, like, that was the first time I would say I was like really open to like, wow, this is, this person made me feel so comfortable during this time. And that's something that I would like to do for someone else. And I think that would be a pretty cool career. Um, even though I wasn't serious about becoming a physician, it was like, my first exposure to that sort of thing. Um, and then I added another part about Steve um, in here, which was my caretaking. 
um, port, I put that in there. Um, I was advised against putting this as a most meaningful and my personal statement, but it was so impactful um, in my journey towards medicine and helping people in general um, that I feel like it needed to be in both. So you can read through that. And then I put another um, just absolutely random thing that happened, but I was driving to the airport um, and a pedestrian was hit. Um, so I like ran out of my car, went over there and that was like one time where I, like I had just gotten my EMT. I didn't really know what to do. Um, so just like held C-spine, didn't do much, but that made me realize that in those sort of situations, I want to be the person that can really help that individual. Um, and then my last paragraph was about uh, tutoring a girl that um, I helped get into PA school. Well, not necessarily helped her get into PA school, but we were able to um, have her organic chemistry class not hinder her getting into PA school. And that was really cool. Um, sort of a triumph that I was able to share with someone else, which was pretty sweet. Um, and then I just summed it up with a concluding paragraph. Then we get into the letters of recommendation. So I had four letters of recommendation. One was from the IFC office. Um, and then another one was from my research. And then I had one from my physics professor and then one from my organic chemistry professor who I also worked for as a TA. So I would say, um, and then the physics professor had also been a mentor for a few years. So most of my letters were professors that had known me for multiple years throughout undergrad. And I think they were able to write like well um, and have an informed letter that wasn't just a cookie cutter, like, oh, I was in your class, all this. Um, the one thing I didn't do was get a non- um, science professor. As you could see, if you went through my classes, I didn't take very many non-science courses. And the ones I did, I took freshman year before I had 100% committed to being in pre-med. And I, like, I honestly didn't spend any time in those classes outside of going to the class and taking the test. So I didn't feel like I was able to ask those professors for a good enough letter of recommendation. Um, so for my school list, I applied to 35 schools. Um, all MD. It was a lot. It was very expensive. Um, that's my school list right there. The only one that I really had zero chance at was UCLA, both the Drew and the regular campus. I did not realize that the Drew campus was um, like not targeting my demographic at first, but I wasn't sure between the two and it was um, kind of I wanted to get my application in, so I just clicked both. And then I ended up not being able to apply to the other one because they required preview, and I didn't know that either. Um, the only other thing to note about my application is my Casper test. I took a little bit late, so that did delay my application one week to Casper schools. Um, but other than that, this is my complete AMCAS that got me in this year. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments.